there's one aspect of the effect TS experience that I think is especially alienating for new developers, and that's its use of generator functions. If you've seen this syntax and thought, mm -mm, what's going on here? You are not alone. It initially looks extremely strange, but there are actually really good justifications for it. I'd like to show you exactly how generator functions work and how they enable certain parts of the effect TS experience and hopefully we'll demystify this seemingly controversial design decision. So here we're looking at an ordinary function. It has no parameters and it simply returns this string literal. And we use as const so that the signature is going to represent that literal type. Let's call this. So result equals foo and let's console log result and run it. And we get back foo. Next, let's go to the function keyword and to the right of it, we're going to add an asterisk. And this is going to turn our function into a generated function. And suddenly the signature is a little bit different. The return type is now a generator and generators have three type parameters. The first is the yield, which we'll cover soon. The second is our return type and the third we'll also talk about later. If I run the same code, we're getting back, well, what appears to be an empty object. This is actually a generator. We just don't see the methods for rest assured, aside from the fact that it's not printed. This is in fact the generator that we're seeing right here. And something to note is if we have like a console log first statement and we run this code, we're not seeing that console log. And that's because none of the body of the generator function is executed. In order to execute it, we have to go to the generator and call the next method. Now, if we run the same code, we're going to see the console log and we're going to see an iterator result. The iterator result is what we get back from calling next. And there are two types of results to be aware of. We distinguish between these two types using done. So if done is true, then the result comes from a return. But there's another type of result. You can think of this as intermediate returns and they come from yield. Full well, yield bar as const, and suddenly our result is going to have bar as our first type argument. If we run this code again, we see the value is bar and the done is false. So when we called next, it executed the code leading up to this yield, and then the computation was suspended. If we want to finish this computation, we can run another result out next. And we'll see this time around, we capture the yield but it wasn't done. We called next again, got the final return value, and it was done. And if we were to call this yet again, we would just get undefined and done remains true. So just to reiterate, generator functions and yielding within them gives us a mechanism to describe functions where we can pause and resume the computation. There's another noteworthy property of generators, which is that we could go to the next call corresponding to a given yield and pass in value. So here we'll say, as. And then on line three, we can capture that value and we will console.log. Here was the resume value. When we run the same code, we can see that it printed out more text. Here's the resume value and then baz, which was captured from the yield. This doesn't have a strict type. If we were to go up here and give the generator an explicit signature like this, then value would indeed have a type of string. That being said, when we use effect gen, we never explicitly specify the return type. So we'll just leave it like this for now. Now, something to note is even though we don't specify that return type, it does infer whatever the items that we yield. And if we were to, for instance, yield some other type, let's say we yield some object here, I, and go up to the signature, that type that we just yielded is going to be inferred and represented in the return type of our generator function. And why this is important for effect is we're able to yield descriptions of some computation that a runtime executes on our behalf, and then it can resume the execution of this function, potentially giving us some value back. Let's get rid of this text right here. And we'll use a while loop to fully consume this generator. Copy this, we'll let current equals result.next while not current dot done console dot log current and 
current equals result dot next. And now when we run this, we see that we get that first cost of log, the first yield, we see the resumed value is undefined because we didn't actually specify any value in our next call. And then we have our second yield. I suppose the only other thing we should do is console.log current. And that way, when we execute this, we'll also see our done value. Let's scroll up a little bit. And the next thing worth noting is that we could have like a child generator. And here we can yield another value as const and return the child result. And then within the parent generator, we could const child result equals yield child. And upon doing this, we're going to see the child results type is string. If we were to say as const, then this would be narrowed to the child result. And in addition to capturing the child generator's return type inside of this variable, we also capture the child generator's yield type within the parent generator. So here we see another value. One more thing worth going over as far as the machinery of generator functions and iterables in general is maybe let's refactor child so that instead of yielding child as a call, we're going to yield it as an object. And in order to achieve this, we're going to specify const child equals here. We're going to add a symbol dot iterator like a generator function, but as a method. And now when we yield child, we're going to have the same exact behavior. And you could think about this representation where it's an object as not too dissimilar from when we have an effect. So we have an effect wherein we have the result, the error and the requirements, the a value or successful value you could think of as being somewhat equivalent to our return. And then the errors and requirements are communicated through yields. I think the key difference is that instead of yielding strings, we're actually yielding complex objects containing like an instruction of some sort. And this would be some kind of computation, which when the effect runtime is executing our generator, it's then able to check if current dot value dot instruction then it would like run this instruction for us. It would go ahead and grab the value out of this, and then it might match on this value. So if is error value, in that case, we're actually going to want to break out of the execution. Otherwise we have a successful value here and we'd want to be able to track this so that we can pass it into the next. And the way that we could do this would be to say, let next value equals We'll initialize it as undefined here. When we do get a successful value back from the execution of an effect, we'd say next value equals value. And then whenever we call next, we're going to pass in the next value. And this way, let's go up to the top. If we cost result equals yield star child, we're going to be able to interact with the successful value directly. Meanwhile, we're going to see any of the error types propagated in the parent's yield parameter position. Now it's important to note that effect is going to transform the signature of the generator that you pass into an effect gen. So up here, if we were to actually bring in effect and then create an effect using effect gen, and we pass in a generator function. At the type level, this is being mapped. Let's also bring in data from effect slash data, and we'll create an error. My error extends data dot tagged error. My error. Maybe let's actually name this effect two, because I think we have another variable named effect, but within this generator function, let's yield new my error and take a look at the signature. And you can kind of ignore this yield wrap effect effect. The important thing to note is that this yield resulted in the yield parameter position containing this representation of itself. Now let's yield a requirement. So yield, and let's bring in terminal from effect platform. And now the generator function has a signature wherein the yield position has this union. 
So we have a yield wrap of tag with terminal and we have a yield wrap of effect with my error. But this signature isn't very legible. So what effect.gen does is it maps that signature into the more condensed effect type. And if we yield additional types, like for instance, we'll bring in file system and we'll yield a file system. The generator function is just going to get increasingly complex to the point where it's truncated, but the signature of the effect now represents these requirements in the most concise legible manner. And because generator functions let you model in a type safe way, the pure composition of these computations with side effects, we're suddenly able to propagate errors up through what could be a pretty complex graph. So let's create const effect three, and this will be effect.gen. And then here we'll pass in another generator function. And now let's yield effect two. In the case that effect two returns some value, we can capture this here. And of course it's typed. Meanwhile, this effect is going to inherit any of the errors or requirements of the child effects. Another thing that's really worth noting is that in the context of the generator function, we can run arbitrary JavaScript code. So we could run for loops or plus I of ABC. We can console log import dot meta dot URL. Really most things here fly. It's not like there are extra considerations like there are with React hooks. This isn't a reentrant function. We describe our computation here and it gets executed. There is one caveat, which is awaiting promises. So hypothetically, effect could support async function here and allow you to await some promise. And then effect.gen could be responsible for transforming the signature back into kind of the flat and most minimal effect type. But this is just a little bit junky in the case that you want to just yield some kind of a child generator because of the coloring of the generators. So the solution in effect is not to use async await, but instead to use yield effect.promise. And here we specify the asynchronous computation that we want it to execute. We resolve this to 42 and then capture the results. This will be the type to which the promise results. But aside from this, really anything in here is fine. Any standard JavaScript, just throw it in there. Now, one more reason that the generator based approach is so powerful is because of these context tags. You can go ahead and grab the values that are associated with these tags. And this means that we're able to interact with an instance of a terminal or a file system or whatever our dependency without that dependency being coupled to our effect. This is really nice for testing because you can swap out, for instance, a database with a mock database. It means you don't constantly have to parameterize and change those parameters, change where you're calling a given function and work through a tangle of passing arguments from the places where they originate down to all of the different places where they're used. You get to create a tag, yield it, and this gives you an instance that you can immediately begin interacting with. And at whatever point in your program graph, you want to specify that dependency, you just type. And then in this case, we can provide the bun context dot layer. And now within this effect, we no longer see those requirements. Now this might not seem that useful given that we are immediately providing that layer to the effect that requires it. But as you can probably imagine, you might have effects within effects within effects, you could build a very complex program and you can find yourself in any of your given functions, changing around the parameters endlessly. I might be passing these dependencies to dozens of different parts of my program. I'm going to think about how I funnel them through the program is just additional cognitive load. It doesn't actually help me express my software idea. And the generator based function approach lets us get rid of this in favor of this amazing dependency injection system. And you can think of it a little bit like this in this runtime pseudocode, let's say there's a map cost context equals new map. And this map goes from constructors to instances within the loop where we consume the generator and interpret its items. You can imagine there's check if 
current dot tag, then we'll access dependency equals context.get current dot tag. And the next step will be to assign next value equal to that dependency so that when we ultimately call next, we're able to capture that dependency within the resumed generator. In other words, this yield is going to evaluate to the instance that we have specified as the next value. It's just a really nice way of modeling dependency injection. And this is entirely possible thanks to generator functions and thanks to a runtime, which is interpreting them in order to get instructions that it executes on our behalf. We can teleport values directly where they're needed. We can implicitly track requirements and errors within the type system. And this doesn't even begin to touch on other parts of the effect experience that benefit from this way of representing our computations. For instance, the effect workflow package and effect cluster, which solve challenges in creating distributed systems. All of these things are unlocked. Fewer errors, fewer refactors, a rich standard library. A side note, effects schema is amazing. It's far more powerful than Zod. And we're really just touching the tip of the iceberg here. So yeah, my impression is that effect and the effect gen experience are rapidly becoming the new standard. And hopefully some of the overview of this design behind effect gen can help those of you who are new here to overcome that barrier to entry and to start to have these crazy aha moments that excite you. And if there are any parts of this experience that feel especially daunting, please let me know and I'll try to help. And on that note, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.